Would you turn the light on? Say you'll be there. Say you'll be there. When I'm down on luck and I don't amount to much. Say you'll be there. Say you'll be there. I might need a hand to hold. Today we're here with Tidy, who is the number one DJ from Australia. He's been voted the number one DJ twice. And I thought it'd be really cool to have you here on, on, at the mansion doing a YouTube video because I wanted to interview people from the entertainment world that were celebrities. Because one of the most popular things that people always ask is about how the, being a celebrity affects your personal life, from being like a private citizen to being a public life. And also because I'm making music now. You know, I'm, I'm a businessman, but now I'm becoming an artist. I'm making music videos. My business partner is going to be rapping with me. It's going to be super fun. That's awesome. And I also listened to your music, and I thought it was epic. Thank you so much. I appreciate, I appreciate that. I'm really a big fan of that kind of music, you know, and you're, you're, you're just exactly the kind of music that I listen to all the time, you and your, your buddy knows him because we have so many mutual friends. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it's amazing. Like, you know, it's a small world here in LA. Obviously, I'm from Australia. I moved here two years ago. Um, I was basically it was because I doing the flight from Australia to America is about 12 to 13 hours and uh, I was I spaced myself out of, out of Australia for a long time so I would come to America and I would do three weeks of touring here then I'd come home to Australia and I'd do have like a week off then I'd go over to Asia and Europe and I was doing this so much that uh, I was spending so much time on the plane that I was like, I unpacked my bags and just went straight to LA. So here I am. But what's really beautiful about the music industry is that um, everyone's connected, you know, and uh, I thought it would be kind of a lot hard, harder than I thought to, to, you know, to move out here and meet people. But so many people are connected, like you just said, you know, that like uh, it's, 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 it's very easy to, to make friends and start a new life out here. Well, I thought it was interesting that you've been doing this since you were a teenager. I think when you were 16, you were recording music, right? I was that guy in school that people threw food at. I was the music nerd, I guess, you know. I, I was, I would, while other people were playing sports, like, and things like that, it's very, very Australian. Uh, I was spending my time in the music room being, being a, a loser, I guess. Um, but, yeah, I, I never really thought it would turn into what it did. I hope. I hoped it would. Um, I was very much into like composing and classical music. Even after high school, I went and did a degree in uh, in music. And um, yeah, so it's it's interesting that um, it, it went that way. I guess I'm uh, curious that as somebody who is now traveling around the world doing tour on music, how is the people that you're interacting with that are also kind of doing the exact same thing affecting your life? Like, how are they influencing you, inspiring you, and how do they interact with you as, like, a, a fellow artist? Is there, like, a community that kind of, like... Yeah, there's, um, there's... I always find that the most uh, inspiring people are the happier people that aren't, um, you know, not out to, like, use you. Like, it's, uh, there's, there's two sides to, to the industry. There's, there's people who, like, are doing it because they want to be famous, and people who are doing it because it's beautiful and they and they love it and that's their passion and um so I'm, I'm really lucky because I haven't met too many people that um that aren't passionate about what they do and uh yeah I, I, I meet people all, all around the world I've actually done quite a lot of collaborations with people um what are your favorite collaborations after you've completed uh, I know that you had the Chainsmokers. Um, that, yeah, I, did, I just did a remix for Chainsmokers. Like, gorgeous. Yeah, Chainsmokers, amazing guys. So I, I toured, uh, I played a lot of shows with them, and I knew, I've known them for a while, but like they're so chill. You'd think people of that caliber, so successful, um, they would be too busy to, to even talk to other people. But I just hit them up and said, hey guys, like I'd love to remix this song. And it was like the same day I got sent the stems. Like, I think it's a great example of networking because most people believe that you, can, you can't even reach or touch these people. I, th I think that that's a, the Chainsmokers are a perfect example of, how, of, of why nice people and people with a, a, a kind heart can really succeed. Because, you know, if they have the time to be able to text someone back and go, yeah, sure, I'd love, I'd love you to remix this song. What's funny about that comment is that I'll watch, even as like a little kid, I would watch journalists say things like, yeah, you just need to have a nice heart and be good and be kind to people and just be a good person and things will happen. I'll be, I listen to this and I'm like, 
Oh my, this is such like the PR thing, but it's totally true. Yeah, it's, like I'll, I'll actually just hang out with people just because they're nice people. Exactly. And I think that any person on the planet, no matter whether you're a billionaire entrepreneur or whether you're a famous entertainer, most of my friends are on the, you know, the former side. They're like those really rich business people. Yeah. But most people will be surprised at the few number of people that will reach out to them, just like nice people that just want to hang out, just add value to their lives. Yeah. You get people just trying to like pitch them or get something from them. And when you meet that kind of person, you're just trying to help out. Yeah. It's it's very valuable. I think the I think you know the the most um, the most important thing is that a lot a lot of a lot of people for some reason think that because you're in the same industry, it's competitive, and sure like you know things are competitive but it doesn't there's room for anyone who who is just having fun and loving it and uh by having by having that attitude and being passionate and excited and supporting you like you, you want to see your friends win you want to see people do well and i think if you have that attitude i don't know if it applies you know because i've always been in the music industry i don't know if it applies in in different businesses but uh, I've always just found that just by wanting to see the people around you succeed. Well, I, I think there's a lot of parallels yeah. to any kind of business, any kind of industry. I mean, even in like the dynamics of your business, for example, like every single month we launch a new product. And like you, you will, you'll, you'll, you'll launch a new single. Like yeah. I, I think you have one coming out soon too. Yeah, I have a new single coming out. Sounds like a plug here. <laughs> but I mean, I guess I was curious because I'm curious about how launching a new single is to like launch a new product. Like for us, we have to build a team, we have to build a marketing campaign, we have a manager, we have agents, but we have multiple agents because we have like a, a, a company. Yeah. How does your team function to like get that single out there and like what do you have to do? I know there's the content, yeah. there's content creation and yeah. then there's the marketing promotion around it. How does, how does all that fit together as a puzzle? It's, um, it's something that, uh, yeah, so I, I have a team of people, like you know, I have a manager, I will have a publicist, um, I have a booking agent, um, and then the collaborators I work with, so the new singles just coming out with um, an artist named Morton. And he's an incredible person and uh, also Cameron Walker is the vocalist, so he has his own management. And all of these people have to work together to make a successful product, but it's in everyone's best interest. So, you know, while, while you have the creatives who produce and write the song, then you have the management who are working out the, uh, the appropriate business strategies and then the publicists and all that and it's I guess you know that, that that's the, very important to make a successful product and um and it's just great to have like people who enjoy working together on something like that and everyone has the same focus the same vision and um yeah I think it's cool that you're working on the collaborations I think it takes some, for some artists forever just to realize that they should collaborate with other people yeah collaborations are really really fun because uh, so I've released a ton of singles on my own, but what's cool about collaborations is that you can take inspiration from someone that, uh, you know, like for example, Morton, the new single that I've, I'm just doing is called Sharpest Weapon, and uh, I've never worked with Morton before this song, but loved his music, and he brings something to the table that I wouldn't have thought to do, and uh, it comes at you get this kind of like hybrid product that people uh that's kind of surprising when two different people from two different scopes work together you get magic and the same thing happened with the Borges record you know I've, I've always loved his music uh and um I've played a lot of shows with him and uh we we decided to collaborate on the track and it came out this really cool kind of hybrid between like what he's into and what I'm into and yeah so collaborations are super super important now I, I guess in the entertainment world I, I know that like we're kind of like an infotainment so we're not Christ we're not quite crossing the border between you know information infotainment and entertainment we haven't crossed it yet we, we will in the future but I guess I'm curious that being just like as an entertainer you know cause I view you as an entertainer I try <laughs> yeah I try, I, I try to entertain <laughs> I guess I'm curious like how your personal persona has changed over time has it actually changed? I know that it can. So, like, um, I like I said. So, going back to the beginning, I, when I first started being an artist, it was interesting because I was this kind of like high school music geek who wasn't that confident. And to be honest, I'm still like very self-conscious of like if I'm 
that good or if I, you know, where I need to improve. But being an, when you get to the point where your music, people like your music and you're literally, like I remember the day I was, I was playing shows of my own to probably 500 people max. And then one day I was invited to play in Amsterdam um, to about 30,000 people. And I was so, like so nervous, but uh, when you get, kind of get up there, I, I remember actually turning to the stage manager and I said, I need to take my shoes off. And he was like, why? As I said, because I just need to feel like I'm in my living room because I was so used to just DJing to nobody in my living room. <laughs> and awesome. so I took my shoes off in front of about like 20, 30,000 people. And I just felt at home and comfortable. And, um, and I still, to this day, like, admit that I'll get up and play shows to 50,000 or more and I'm nervous but it's the good nervous it's not like nervous that I'll mess up it's nervous like it's intimidating to be in front of that many people and perform uh, but it's that rush that also drives me to try and be better as an artist but I think where the where it could fall down for some people is when that goes to their heads and then they it, that an ego was created and uh, I don't know I, it's a, I guess for me personally it's very important in both business and in being an artist to to drop the ego and to realize that you're just one of these other 50,000 people and when you're playing that show you're playing to yourself you want to hear what you would it, you've got to put yourself in the position of someone in the crowd of any of those people and and play what you would want to hear and uh and i think yeah when you separate yourself from the potential ego that can come from being an artist that that's when you can really hit some amazing things so that's uh, an epiphany for me i'm gonna remember that <laughs> i think that in the future uh i mean we'll do events and viewing it as a team i think is really awesome I think that will also help your culture for your fan base. So I think that's really cool too. Yeah, it's it's um that it, it was it was something that um I've seen. I think all the most successful artists that I'm friends with and I, I know are just the same people that they are if they were just chatting like you and I, and they're the same on stage. A lot of the successful artists that I've been hanging out with for the last three to four months, you know, they always seem to like post on social media about how busy they are. And I know that like in my world, like I have a certain amount of busyness, but it's involving business tasks. I might be involved in meetings and golf, I might be involved with the creation of content for my videos or my channel. What is it that entails your busyness and your busy life and how busy is it? Um, yeah, so for me, I'm, I'm, I'm very focused on, like I'm, I'm very involved in the writing process. So there's a lot of ways about approaching a song and that you can be in, like you know someone sends you a song and then you produce it i like to be a part of everything i'm a songwriter so i will spend a lot of time just playing piano and working with a, a vocalist on getting the best it's called a top line so the best like the best vocal we can get over the best chords and i wrote about 300 songs and this is like i'm not kidding you i spent three years and made about 300 songs to get to my album which called Redefined, which is 20, rec 20 songs in total. And 20 is a lot for an album. But, so people would assume that that's like, I, I released everything, but there was 300 songs that I wrote and had to cut down to 20 to get to that record. Um, so yeah, when I post on, on socials, I guess it's just being in the studio, playing piano, writing songs, and sometimes it's just silly things, you know. Uh, um, you know, on tour or like being on plane flights and things like that. So how much downtime do you think you have for your, your life? I mean, being a, a world traveling artist, I imagine like so much of it's scheduled. Yeah, it, it's, it is, but it's, um, the good thing is, and I, why I feel so like blessed with this career is that the, it doesn't feel like downtime. Even like I enjoy the work and it, it so much, like, like I always, always wanted to when I was, from age 16 to now I wanted to perform and I wanted to play music and now that I actually live that it feels like I'm it's always downtime <laughs> the hardest part for me is the flights it's just like that's the bit where I'm sitting in this plane with people around me and I can't work I can't or I can't like you know maybe I can make I can kind of write music on flights and I, I often try to but 
that's the time when I'm like sitting for about 14 hours sometimes just on a plane. But everything else is like, you know, you arrive at the destination, you get to meet new people, you get to see this beautiful place and then play a show to all these loving fans. And then when you get back to like, now I'm based in LA, I'm, I'm, it's not work. I'm not, I'm, I don't feel like I'm ever working really. I don't, yeah. it, it's, it's, I, it reminds me of uh, what I did in 2008. And in 2009, I went on a tour of 110 countries. And I was doing seminars. 110 countries? Yeah, and in fact, I did 270 cities in 70 countries in six months, where I did one to three events per day. I think you beat me. But, I mean, <laughs> but it wasn't music. It wasn't just entertainment. It was more about teaching guys on how to pick up girls, showing in hidden camera videos, and breaking it down like Madden would teach a football game. Can I ask you questions? <laughs> yeah. What are your biggest secrets? Like, yeah, yeah, you said you like teach people on how to pick up girls. I oh think. yeah, my, my, my business partner and I, so we created this company called Real Social Dynamics, where we teach guys how to pick up girls. We go out to bars and clubs, we have hidden cameras, we break down what they did right and wrong, and telling them what to say, what to do, while they're actually in bars and clubs. Wow. We charge $2,000 a week in the boot camps. We have an immersion program called Vegas Immersion. That's amazing. It's $2,000 a month living in Las Vegas, doing that same thing. So I was probably that guy in the bar doing it all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, 99% of people don't even approach the girl. So I mean, the fact that you even tried, <laughs> that's kudos. Uh. But Maybe either. DJs are a little more lucky. I think it's like you know, the, hopefully, like the, you know, I'm saying too much, but you know, <laughs> the, well, pe I think the, that the people approach us. <laughs> that helps a lot. I mean, I think I think that it, it definitely happens. There's definitely an effect for that. I mean, you're you're in the club. You're up there. Everyone sees you. They give you props. It's kind of like how a, a fan should be treating you. <laughs> but then if you go out to like a regular regular pub, some people may recognize you. Some people may not. And then you have the advantage of being normal. For example. Um, one of my friends and a close uh, advisor for me is uh, Tony Shea, he created Zappos and sold for a billion dollars to Amazon. Now he had some base in Las Vegas. So he goes out to the bars and clubs, everyone knows who he is. So if he wants to say, hang out with our guys, if he wanted to go out to the bars and clubs, he'd have to do it in a different city like Miami. So he couldn't be treated differently. So he could learn the skill sets. And it's, it's useful skill sets. Cause I think that the skill sets of understanding how to do two things, like the inner game of losing outcome dependence and knowing that you're gonna more likely get success when you're not caring about the result too much. You're more free flowing. You're focusing yeah. just mostly on you and your passion of who you are, conveying who you are. And then the outer game tax, it's like talking and be who you are without judgment. I think that yeah, is, that's a good. That's, that's a really good point. I feel like as well, like coming from an artist standpoint, um, it's easy for people to uh, use their their name or their their fame to uh, find find a partner but the right people the ones that you should be looking for are usually the ones that you wouldn't meet in the club because if someone's out with an agenda uh, generally they're not the right people because they, they're <laughs> there because they're there for a reason but if you um, if you don't tell people what you do for a job or you don't like play on like you know like hey I'm tidy and da 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 then you know, you have a better chance of meeting someone. I mean, even when I was a kid, I used to read or watch TV shows and entertainment news was on TV. I would see famous artists marrying people and you didn't even know who they were. So I was always wondering, why would they marry them? Are they marry this other celebrity that's super awesome I see on TV? And then as I started to understand the ways of the world, I was like, well, they, they do it because, you know, you want to have people around you that you genuinely like, no matter who they are. I mean, if you look at your entourage, or if you look at the people who follow you, you're not necessarily all famous people. There's people that you trust, you like, Absolutely. same core values, and it kind of sticks with you from your childhood through your adulthood. That's a good point as well with um, even just songwriting. So like, um, from living in LA, it's very easy to for me to say to my publishing company, put me in a session every day with new people. But I always find the best songs that I've ever written, or that ever come, like, get released are the ones that happen where it's by someone that I've met that's just they didn't have an agenda and they were just very nice and I'm like let's just have fun let's like have a drink or two and just try and write something and we do it without any purpose or any kind of like end game and that sometimes in four hours that can be the biggest hit you know I think that's also going to be that core belief of trying to find people without an agenda. I think that's like a human need that people just want to have. Yeah. I think that people lack that in business and the mainstream media and journalism. And I think that that's all going to disappear in the future because you have the internet, social media, the growing evolution of VR and other technologies. 
uh, phone apps. I think that more and more that's going to push people to be more towards that movement. And I think that's going to also affect all of our relationships with how we interact with people. Absolutely. I guess I'm curious about how you personally will use social media. How do you use technology in your day to day life? It's, um, yeah, so with me and social media, it's, uh, it's never really planned, you know? Um, and I do understand that sometimes the best way to sell a product is to have strategy and plan things. But some of the most successful things have come from me being real. I find that, I find that my fans that have stayed fans for a lifetime, like for as long as I've been doing this, are the ones that like they always mention things that I never meant to post. Like well, maybe like one day I've accidentally, like I put something on Instagram that I thought was funny or just like was actual real life and it's gone to Facebook by accident. Or I've done like a live Facebook chat, maybe after a few too many drinks or something. And the things that I never thought that I should mention or didn't mean to are the things that people latch onto. They were like, there was this one time where I, <laughs> I had I had maybe a few too many drinks, and I decided I would cook a, a, a combination of an omelette with vegetables. I called it vegetables, <laughs> and I was drinking vodka and cooking this thing, and I live streamed it like a cooking show, and that was something that I was thinking I'm gonna wake up and really regret this, but it went so well and everyone was like talking to me at shows about that. Like I remember this thing you posted this, long. and so I I I think that um. A lot of people are scared to just post their real life. Like they, they think they have to have a very exact tactic, you know. Um, and the things that have worked for me the most have just been being myself. I think what people want these days, because they're so used to hearing what, like you know, they're so used to hearing scripted things, like the perfect artwork, the perfect, the per the best produced song that that these, the new kids these these days are wanting to hear like the rough stuff like here's something I'm working on or here's the time I played this melody and I didn't do it exactly right but it came out cool and it turned into a song and that is often like the things that people like to see like they they want to see human error and I relate this to an orchestra you know like uh, if I'm composing for a, a massive orchestra uh, the thing that makes it so beautiful is often the human error it's it's not that everyone's perfectly on time, it's that every instrument is slightly a little bit uh, detuned and everyone's a little bit, there's that bit of human error and it makes it feel real. And I think that applies to everything in life. I think, it well, I think that's why a music like dubstep is really popular. It's like a little quirky, it's not typical like classic. Yeah. Yet it still captivates people. Um, I don't know if you know, uh, Nick and I have a mutual friend named Harvey and he created a Hennessy cooking show. Do you know this guy? Uh -huh. So he basically, this is a guy who created a video of him cooking a chicken with Hennessy. Okay. And, he, and he also is an artist, so he performs music. Okay. But he does it in a Versace bathrobe. <laughs> anyway. That's so badass. He, 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 he just put so much personality in cooking this chicken, which lights on fire. It's Hennessy in the stove. It's, it's burning, what have you. But the thing is, He's gotten an audience, just wants to know his personal life, they just want to know you as a human. So much so that he had a video where he just turned off his, um, turned off the lights and just had a dim light in the background and just went to sleep. And thousands of people, I think it was something close to 100,000 people were watching and commenting about how he was sleeping. <laughs> Really? That's like that's amazing. Yeah, it's totally amazing. I mean, you, you should try and see he, what happens. <laughs> Here's a crazy story, right? So, there were, like, I was at Disneyland one time, and there was a DJ at Disneyland who, like, is there to kind of like, play, like, kind of play to. He's not like you know doing a show. He's kind of playing just to be like that Disneyland DJ guy. And I like ran up and I was like just dancing in front of the Disneyland DJ. And out of anything I've ever posted, I think that went the most viral, like millions of views. And I was thinking like, why? But I guess it's just because it's <laughs> real, you know? It's like, it's like funny. A lot of my friends were in the video game world because I'm a big gamer. I'm a, I play Clash Royale, I'm on the Team Liquid Xbox? Clan. Well, I have every system. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right. You know, but um, I went out with the guys when Pokemon Go first came out. And one of the guys is a Moz who uh, is way popular in this game called Hearthstone. It's like a card game for Blizzard. 
And we were playing Pokemon Go, and there was over a hundred thousand people following us. And he has like millions of subscribers on his on Twitch, which is like kind of like YouTube for gaming. Yeah. And I thought that was amazing, just to watch us play Pokemon Go. It's not like action based, but just see his personality I, I while he's catching Pokemon. Pokemon Go. Yeah. I like Pokemon Go. <laughs> <laughs> There's these people. Like, is it true? People are like uh, on on like highways playing the game. Like, uh, yeah, I, I've done that. <laughs> you know what? Uh, the craziest Pokemon Go story I've ever had was I went to a park, mm. and I was playing Pokemon Go, but I was the only adult, so everyone else was children. <laughs> the problem that I faced was that suddenly out of nowhere. Every entrance to the park had SUV cop cars. And then I had, I, the, the manager of the park comes by and starts yelling at the kids. And it's like, kids, get over here now. And then I hear him yelling to the cops, I don't know that guy. And, then, and, they're, and, they're, and they're like, what is that guy saying to you? What is he doing? Because these kids can come up to me, give me tips on how to capture Pokemon better. You're like, like, oh, dude, he's, he's just playing Pokemon, Pokemon Go. Go. <laughs> you know, and all these little kids coming by. You know, it's so weird. So I was like, okay, I guess. I would leave now. And I actually, my coincidence, had dinner with my attorneys. It's like, whoa, that's some crazy stuff, you know? That's like, that's, that's funny. And I, that, I've seen that in, before. I've seen people like in it, like across where, from where, where I live here in LA, and there's this massive group of people. I'm like, what, what is going on over there? And everyone's like playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah, we actually reality. have a, a guy named Max who made a video on his YouTube channel. It's RSC Max YouTube channel, picking up girls playing Pokemon Go when it first came out. How, how I, is I, that done? Oh, you see, 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 see a screen, then you like will zoom in, and we had multiple cameras. They follow him around. He picks up girls. You see all the other girls picking up, playing Pokemon. He walks up to them, hey, I'll play Pokemon Go. At that point, and he starts talking. To Pokemon them. stop. <laughs> stop. Well, cool, man. Well, I've been having a lot of fun here. Thanks for coming down. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Cheers. And uh, yeah, it's it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, and how would people want to? find you and find more of your social media if they want uh, to hear more about you. If you want to find me, it's uh, Tidy, spelled T-Y-D-I, on uh, Facebook, on Twitter, and Instagram. Check out uh, the SoundCloud if you want to hear some more music. Yeah. Write your comments below if you have any questions, and uh, I'll personally answer them. And subscribe Thank to the you. channel. I appreciate that. Yeah, save me some time. I'll be one of your agents. Okay, you know? he's going to answer all my questions. <laughs> <laughs> awesome.
to whatever you're going through when you need a hand to hold i swear i'll never let you go i can always count on you 